Hi, this is Kim Watson. Welcome to backtesting number two. So, um, I last week I talked about backtesting and did a video. Coming from that, I got quite a few different questions coming through just on the very, very st early stages of backtesting. Remember last week I talked about the, the, the process. Firstly, uh, you'll have a strategy. Within that strategy, you'll, you should have a signal which uh, gives you the OK to um, look to take the trade. Then you'll have a, a trigger point itself. Uh, the trigger will be what it, whatever it may be. Um, for example, short term, you might just say when it breaks that prior intermediate high, uh, high there, uh, it gives me a higher low. Oh, that's when I'm going to take the trade. It may be well, many uh, many other things that are crossing the moving average, breaking a trend line, whatever the tri actual trigger may be. That is your trigger. Three from there, you then got um, the time. Remember, I said uh, the time period. That you're going to be trading in and you may come down and look at smaller time frames within that uh, uh, beyond that time frame just to get the absolute trigger make it a you know, better better price action uh, and then you, you the sub time there is also the periods which in which you're going to trade um, now there's no point trading or, or, or testing something right the way through the Asian session if you are not going to get up until seven or eight o'clock in the morning uh, because you're not going to be testing those. The other thing is, I mean, we were looking at, uh, in our live trading room. We we're just doing a little bit of testing, a bit of a exercise on um, Friday last week, and we were looking at uh, crude oil, and we were just discussing the, the times to trade it, and it was it was deemed at between th uh, 2 p.m. and and 9 p.m. were probably the best times because the cash market was properly open there, and uh, for the um, uh, uh, Western Texas, um, and it, it it made more sense to be trading it during that time. There's more more uh, volumes coming in through that point, and the, the signals may be a bit better. So that's the times for that particular market. You may be tra trading between 8 a.m. and 10, for example, um, or a, a short term for, more, for a morning trade. You may say, well, "I'll only take it between that point," because we know between 10 and probably 12 30 one o'clock sometimes you get a bit of do the doldrums um, so you may not trade from there but you may then say from one o'clock through to three I'll take a trade so or eight till three eight to four whatever it may be anyway go too much there four then you've got as I said your exits it's your your, your uh, stops and profits and it was on the on the word of stops which was the 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 uh, the, the quite a few questions coming through so I thought well let's take this as the the subject for this uh, second in the series now stops are a funny old thing um, because a lot of people don't like them I think they're great um, because it's, it, they're, they're there for a reason they stop you losing money or beyond a certain level of money uh, which um, overall if, you, if you're using them um, it's the best thing ever I know some people they don't even use stops um, they, they would rather take the risk or they will hedge um, or they do lots of other things rather than place a stop uh, because they don't want they don't like the, the thought of it being a loss to me it's just another trade which isn't working as I expected but it might come good and might get another trade at a later point so it's just a process so in the process you, you want to have your stops now if you've already been taught something then when you're coming to do your testing use what you've been taught now you may find that um, you, can, you can improve on that because some of these strategies I see out there they're so old um, they may have been uh, taken I mean we, we, if you remember 2008 9 10 we had volatility in the markets that were going going crazy uh, compared to these really quiet markets that we're seeing now so it may be that they're really old strategies or, or they were sort of pretty curve fitted to that time and don't you know not quite the same now you may find you may find the targets don't get reached either but if you've been taught something, look at what you've been taught. You can improve on them. Is is you know, as I say, markets change. You may may actually say, well, actually, I'll I'll do it with the with what's been uh, taught. Plus, I'll uh, do something slightly different. Um, so that's that's one way of doing it. Is just taking what you've got, or what the strategies you suggest. Some strategies are so simple um, in terms of or so logical in terms of where you would put the stop. Uh, and you. So there we go. So you could do it that way. Alternatively, and this is where I sort of get the um, 
well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I haven't really been taught anything. I've got this strategy, looks okay, or partial part of the strategy. What do I do for stops? Well, some ideas around stops, maybe. Um, some people like fixed amounts. They'll have a fixed amount. They, they might do it backwards. So they may have a target, and they may actually take the target and half the target. They, may, they do all sorts of things, but you've got to be a bit careful here. Fixed amounts work okay some of the time, um, but as I've already suggested, if the volatility raises and changes or whatever else, it can be uh, quite iffy. I, I've, I've tested this through different markets and found that sometimes a, a 20 pip, for example, when the past a 20 pip stop would have been absolutely great uh, on the euro dollar, for example, on some things, um, but at later stages that would be too much because the targets were, were non-achievable because the volatility had dried up, so you needed smaller stops, smaller targets if you were still going to take the same basis of the strategy. So fixed, it, it, it's possible. You could say, well, I'm going to use X, X points, and I know traders that do. Um, one, one such trader we were talking to, I was talking to on Friday, um, and he was using a 35 cents on oil as a stop. That was his fixed stop because that he had calculated was and tested had had worked well for him and in, in his, his strategy he was using at the time so it may be that you use a fixed one like that alternatively um, you can look at other factors there um, if you've got a, a pattern um, it may be that you take the pattern and use I, I, I mentioned about the pivot swing um, uh, and I will cover this at another, on another video, but this pivot swing little um, three bar uh, setup here, um, you've got op op different options here. You could, if, you, if we were looking at taking long at this point here, if we go along there, uh, or buy if you want, if you'd rather, um, if we've gone by there, where would you put the stop potentially? Well, you could put it here, you could put it down here. So here it's giving you two potential stops now this and this is all done on candles so that it's going to vary depending on volatility etc um, and it's going to be probably quite relevant to the market at the time potentially anyway um, this was actually around some news so it's uh, maybe in, it was a bit more volatile then than it certainly is now but uh, either way it may give you something that's more appropriate to that current market However, if you if they see the setup before the market's sort of uh, getting underway, so if this has happened at sort of seven o'clock in the morning, and the, it may be a smaller signal comes in, and it may be just a bit too tight. But either way, you, this is the sort of thing where you can just literally trade, and you can say, well, actually, it's below the mo most recent uh, lows, um, and you've got something. So you've got a, a set method. So it's a method as opposed to a set number. Okay, so we we've got the method. You could use some uh, some p traders will like to use um, moving averages. So if they were shorting up here, for example, so scrub that now. Let's say they were shorting here, they might just say, well, actually, I'll put the stop above the um, let's say the 60 minute 50 uh, by five pips or so, just in case it has a little overrun. Um, and that may be the way they put that a few pips above a moving average if they're shorting or vice versa. So. Uh, that's done on uh, as on a, using a secondary tool or a secondary si um, uh, indicator there to to actually build up where the stop may go, um, and then on top of that, other alternatives may be. Um, and one one thing I do like is something called the average true range, and that's what we're going to look at here. Just give you a bit more idea. Um, you could see uh, you could always test and. Uh, and use the average true range. Now, why why the average true range? Because I'm going to slip the average true range on this bar here, and you can see here this is an hourly chart, and it gives me an idea of during the, the peak periods when, when it's actually moving, um, what the range is. It's, it's around about nine pips at the moment, so we we know that in in a in, a, in an hour. <laughs> any given hour it could the average might move around about nine pips at the moment so if I'm putting my stop if I'm thinking of a stop that is less than nine pips a bit, bit, bit likely that I'm going to get stopped out but if I multi use a multiple of that I could use 1.5 depending on aggressive you want or two two times the uh, average true range that should give me 
enough to allow the wiggle room of the market. The markets do wiggle and so how often do you see it come back down pretty close to the, the previous low or even come into that low and then run off uh, just double bottoming or whatever it may be but if, you, if you've allowed enough slack in there then um, you should be okay now I'm, I'm giving you these ideas you could use you could t when you're doing your test you could use 1.5 and 2 times and see how it changes the dynamics and this is the reason why you test because you can actually see what the, the, the better stop is now maybe you say well actually I'm going to use a fixed as I said before or moving average or whatever it may be as your your stop adjustment or you can use a method like this but whatever it is, it needs to be consistent through your testing, your methodology. Not necessarily the stop itself, it can be a variable stop, but variable as in using a single rule, as in one, one and a half, two times average true range, for example. In really volatile markets, some people may use a three times. But that's for all, this, all this is good, but what you've got to remember, at the other end of this, you need to make sure your targets uh, are going to be uh, not just a dream, re uh, realistic targets, and I'll talk about those in an, another update here. Um, the realistic updates are, or targets rather, are achievable. If they're, if they're achievable and you can get um, two times, three times what you're, you're risking here, um, or four or five times, I know on some, some people are quite happy uh, having less um, wins, but a higher win rate, which again is another subject. But sorry a higher return on their win a le less reward <laughs> hang on i'll rephrase that sorry um a, a lower win rate but a higher uh, return so they, they may have five times five to one uh win loss rate as opposed to a two to one but uh, but that, uh, five to one with a 30 percent win rate you can still make quite a bit of money so um, um overall it's it, it's this is the reason you're doing testing to find out the optimum for the market you're looking at and and remember each market changes so optimum for the market that you're looking at and the time you tr you, you're, you're looking to trade so um, what I suggest um, when you're doing this then this is um, so I'm going to keep it to stops today um, with, without an eye um, what I suggest here is you do what I refer to as a quick and dirty um, a QND um, literally um, get a sheet of the paper and run it through and just do do 15 20 just very quickly on a piece of paper don't record everything don't need to just look at how it works and so you take your stop take your take your target and look at how it works very briefly um, using the trigger and everything else it's really good well worth exercise once you've done it you need about 20 results uh, I would say more ideally but if you can get around about 20 results there and start building it up and it looks you you it's enough to give you the basis of what you're looking at then you can say well actually yeah this one works that one works or neither of them work in fact the strategy is rubbish I mean I've seen strategies where people try and trade it all on crossovers and crossover may give you an entry or get around there but if you're looking for exits as well sometimes it, it just it's maybe not a great way of doing things so um, it's the whole process and this is what you start building up so try and uh, take you, your method quick and dirty piece of paper a3 a4 sheet whatever a4 sheet don't even worry about all columns and everything else we'll talk more about columns and some of the thing other things you may recall uh, in a later version of this for now I just want you to get your thinking around in terms of your stops um, and, and and make sure as I say your targets are, are good if you if you're finding that your stops that you needed are so much more uh, that you're almost getting like a one-to-one -one risk reward it may be easy to say well actually it's not a particularly good strategy for me it doesn't really work um, too well e even if it's a 60% because it just needs to go through a bit of a phase and it may not be really what you want it to do so as I say t do your quick Q&D your quick and dirty on, on, the, on your stop method you could try recording two or three different methods there uh, as I said on this pattern piece here you could be stop there stop there or ATR times two or something like that or one and a half whatever it may be 
and 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 record those three different things or four different things on on, a, on your little uh, sheet of paper and see how it goes um but it's, it's it's all important because the more you put behind this the the better the outcome of the final result that you'll have so that's it uh, so very focused on um identifying your stops if you haven't got one that, or using the stops that you're you've been taught or whatever it may be but um, just applying that so you can build up your strategy and do your back testing right that's it for this week uh, have a great one bye for now mm -hmm.